One week ago, Uber was making every excuse under the sun not to pay Brian out. They made his life difficult. They made his life a misery. They did not know that they were messing around with a social media pro. What happened then was a success story. He got paid $2,550.80, and we're going to jump straight in, and I'll show you how. Um, he's a great friend. He's an amazing person, and he just turned to social media to get his money. And I'll go back to the screen shots later and read that out to you. But I have basically diverted a lot of the traffic from my Rideshare Professor channel uh, to this link. And I want to walk you through three different ways that Brian has shown me how you win this battle. Now, he states, and then the website, by the way, is called integrity, um, mcseo.com. His details are above if you ever want to reach out to him. Four reasons brands and businesses need Twitter. Uh, Twitter is an efficient and effective tool for spreading news quickly, right? I've been using it more and more, and I've also seen that Tony West is now blocking my tweets where I'm including him. So I have his attention, which is beautiful, right? Um, where you can spread news quickly to thousands of people. Mark Routon's in the house. Howdy. I appreciate you, buddy. How's your night going? Awesome. Um, not only does it give the user opportunity to share relevant information, but followers are able to share posts. Every time this happens, the user's reach expands exponentially. When used to its fullest potential, Twitter enables brands and businesses to garner leverage by soliciting the attention of influential individuals and to engage and resolve issues with customers. Uh, while there are countless reasons to incorporate this social media platform into any marketing campaign, some of the most significant and impactful are as follows. Now for Brian, there's his tweet there. He, he got paid, you know, after he did all of his due diligence, he got his doc, his papers, his doc, uh, doctor documents, he submitted everything the correct way. And Uber came to him with a big slap in the face and said, sorry, uh, doesn't qualify. We need more from you. It just, just creating hurdles. He's like, no, nope, not going to happen. Within one week, he uses his social media skills to get paid. That's a great story, my friends. That's the story I am promoting. That's the story I want you to use. I want you to use the same techniques that Brian is using, that I am using, that Dustin is using, that Harry the Rideshare guy is using. Firstly, number one, it's great exposure. Marketing would be useless if its efforts failed to expose business um, not only to their targeted uh, demographics, but to the world at large. There is a vast array of techniques to advertise and engage consumers, but one of the most powerful ways to garner interest in a brand is to borrow the popularity of someone who is capable of influencing thousands or more people. This is why Nike contracted with Michael Jordan and why Proactive employs high-profile celebrities such as Kelly Clarkson and Adam Levine to promote its products. Mark Routon's in the house and he says, hammer time. It is hammer time. We're going to show you how to hammer these companies and get results. Thank you, Mark Routon. We got Jimmy in the house, Abstract Echo. Hello, everyone. And please, we have 11 people watching, 10 now, one left. Hit the thumbs up, hit the like. Um, you're going to have access to three amazing articles. You're going to learn a lot. And if you can go out and use this in times of trouble, you will get your money, right? So these um, high-profile celebrities, as I mentioned, such as Kelly Clarkson and Adam Levine, to promote its products, they have millions of fans who deem them credible and want to hear what they have to say. Twitter is the ideal tool 
for reaching individuals with influence, connecting with celebrities, business owners, industry experts, and thought leaders, whether they respond to tweets or share them, you know, retweeting. Their host of followers are then influenced by this action and introduced to a brand. Here is a live tweet I did tagging Arsenio Hall and Little John during the Arsenio Hall show. Check out who retweeted. Brian Hughes, a driver and friend, I follow him at Brian Hughes 116, goes at Little John, killed it tonight on at Arsenio Hall and hashtag Arsenio's band is off the chain. That was sick. Hashtag get low. Um, so Brian Hughes then, you know, shows it was retweeted nine times, nine times. As a result of this tweet and the engagement it received, my account was followed by a television executive, Robin DiMaggio, our senior hall show drummer and musical director to the United Nations and our senior halls booking agent for the show because he wrote that, right? Number two, it's inexpensive. Dennis Shaw is in the house. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you. Um, Abstract Echo says, hi, Mark. We've got a little conversation breaking out. There. That's awesome. Love it. Only possible on YouTube Live. It's inexpensive, folks. While investing in promoted tweets is an option, it is not necessary. Twitter itself is an effective and free social media marketing platform it can be used to share, promote, and comment on real-time events and is also an ideal means of community engagement. When consumers are able to join together to discuss a service or a product and the brand engages along with them, loyalty flourishes. Um, the issue of hashtags is an efficient marketing mechanism that can be used to connect activity and topics across multiple platforms or to classify poll results and opinions, for instance. Tweets that include both links and hashtags solicit the most engagement, right? We know that hashtag sign there, right? Uh, it's Moose is in the house and he says, what's up, folks? Number three, consumers love it. So it's Moose, quick recap. We're showing how um, Brian a driver was turned down at first by Uber that made every excuse in the sun not to pay him out the 14-day financial assistance. He turned to Twitter and social other media platforms. And one week later, one week later, it was three days ago, he got success. He tweeted me today, hey, I got the $2,550, right? So he used what works best, social media, and in this case, he took it to Twitter. Um, so consumers love it. Approximately 33% of Twitter users follow at least one brand. This equates to millions of people who engage with countless businesses via this tool. Because this is such a prevalent practice, individuals expect to find what they're looking for. In the last few years, there has been an increase of 663% in Twitter users that ask for business recommendations. The platform is used to seek customer reviews, solicit opinions and advice, and ask questions. These things are not nearly as convenient to accomplish without Twitter. So if a given business does not use it, its online competition will benefit. Number four, channel for customer service. Business Twitter profiles are accessible locations to request various forms of customer service. This may be to file complaints or ask about store policies. For instance, when businesses' representatives routinely monitor social media accounts, they can publicly respond to and resolve customer issues. I've seen that many a times. Responding in this way is not only a meaningful and personal method to connect with the customers, and nurture relationships, but it solidifies the brand's public image because followers can witness the professionalism and concern with which matters are handled. Jimmy says it's deplorable that we have to pound a company or individual 
just to get them to do the right thing. That says a lot about their moral compass. 100% correct, right? It's, it's truly sad that you have to turn to these mediums to have them fulfill their promises. Because as we know, their promises followed by promises, followed by promises, followed by empty words, empty statements that never materialize. So sadly, as Abstract Echo says, you got to go out there, you got to grab the social media hammer and you got to pound them. Boom, boom on the head, boom on the head until you get the attention. Um, I have done that a lot this week, right? Um, I did get under Tony West's skin. Um, and that is after I spoke to the Uber attorneys about two weeks ago. I now said, look, I told them, I texted them, I'm not allowed to re reveal the number, but I said, listen, you guys don't want to cooperate? Okay, then I'll have to take it to social media. So that's what I'm doing. I'm following up on my promise to Tony West and to the other Uber executives that, you know, they want to play this little cat and mouse game with me. They want to sing and dance. I'm not interested in singing and dancing with them. I want to get paid. I want to get paid all the money I deserve. That, you know, all the money for all the drivers that I brought them. And sadly, I got to get out the hammer. And I have no problem getting out the hammer. I will get paid. Mark my words. Uh, Mark Rowden says, AE, I wholeheartedly agree. Thank you, gentlemen. Your support is amazing. Uh, your contributions are amazing. Um, so... Dell has established multiple Twitter profiles, each meant to address different issues and accomplish separate tasks. One, for example, is to promote deals and explain options for refurbished computers. When Comcast provides customer support via Twitter, their representatives get personal by providing their names and pictures. So, you know, this is just an example here. I like this. This is the personal touch. So they have their Twitter accounts for service, for this, for refurbished. And then boom, you're getting, you know, immediate response from a live person, real face. They're there to help you. Wonderful stuff. Whether utilized for its cost effectiveness to provide quality customer service or to connect with prestigious and credible individuals that can influence followers, Twitter has the unbridled potential to transform brands early in 2014, simply measured which provides social media analytics and measurement services, conducted a study of Twitter use. It was noted that 92% of the world's top brands tweet on a daily basis, and more than 36% of these tweets include links. Furthermore, tweets that contain both links and photos garner 150% more engagement than brand averages. When these statistics are considered and Twitter's features and functions are employed strategically, the power of the social media platform is undeniable. Uh, with a strong focus on and deep understanding of social media marketing business today, businesses today can leverage brand recognition with fewer marketing dollars. Those who fail to glean a competitive edge with social media risk missing a profound marketing opportunity. Um, that there is my buddy Brian Hughes, and he's in good old Houston, Texas. Now, another great piece that Brian wrote on one of his other websites, if you want to follow him there, um, on socialmediatoday.com, socialmediatoday, um, six ways to boost your brand presence on Twitter. Over the 12 years of its existence, Twitter has evolved into a powerful marketing platform now used by tens of business, uh, by, by thousands of businesses to engage with their audience and build their brands. What began with 140 characters has grown to 280 characters and incorporates videos, chats, polls, and more. Over 45% of users log on to Twitter every day, and companies who excel on this platform know how to engage them with these proven techniques. And we're going to go over these proven techniques, but for, before I do, I do want to read to you how this all came about. One week ago, um, hey, Brian, we hope, um, no, sorry, um, it was one week ago, right? 
hey, Brian, thank you for submitting your documents. Um, we are writing to confirm. Um, sorry, after looking into your account, it appears that we are missing written documentation from a government public health official or licensed medical doctor, right? If you get the necessary documentation, you can su submit it for up to 30 days after your diagnosis. Now, he had followed. He said, okay, well, you know, I thought I only had to do this job once, and I thought I was going to get immediate um, attention. Apparently not. They don't want to pay me. Good. Okay, I got to now resort to my skill set. So three days ago, things changed, right? Uh, we hope you are. We hope your recovery is going well. Um, we are writing to confirm that you are eligible for financial assistance for 14 days, and that your payment of two thousand five hundred and fifty dollars eighty cents has been processed. You should expect to receive this in your next pay statement or immediately, if using instant pay. How did it go? from there to there within one week. Well, they were dealing with a social media pro. I spoke to him in length on the phone today. 281 code, the gentleman is from Texas, right? Now, I go back to um, his story, but before I do that, I do want to um, share with you um, his he said because I messaged that the 2550 was past the threshold for my instant pay I asked if they could help me get some through instant pay or I have to wait till next Tuesday he called me and took the money back put $1900 so I could get instant pay it and then they're paying him out the, dis the difference he said now that's service LOL, Twitter has power. They have the uh, power to act only when you engage them in Twitter chats. Twitter chats. A Twitter chat is an organized conversation about a given topic. This option enables businesses to connect with their audience and key industry influences, influences to, to discuss a specific issue. Um, it's Moose says, I wonder if we will ever see some of these companies on a show like American Greed. That's a good one. They belong there, don't they, right? Um, by the way, the um, tomorrow at 10 a.m., I'm going to push out. Um, I put a timeline, a story about uh, Uber CEO Dara Koshoshawi, material from 2017, material uh, from... April uh, 2019, and then the latest material that I came up with in April 2020, how radically his story changed, right? And it truly goes back right to him as a little kid in Iran when he was nine years old. So I walk you through the entire story, his whole story, and I sort of break it down, and I understand why he clings on to everything. I understand why he doesn't give up anything. I understand why he doesn't like to share. I understand now why he doesn't want to sacrifice any of his salary. I understand why he is incapable to help, right? I looked at the whole timeline of his history right up to now, April 2020. So it's going to be an interesting piece tomorrow. Um, I know he's going to watch it because I've put in all the tags, the I'm going to tweet it. Um, I don't think he's going to like it, but I think I'm speaking the truth. Not, not. Let me rephrase it. I know that I'm. It's not that I think that I'm um, speaking the truth. I am speaking the truth because I, 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 I look, I look at his life from a little kid in Iran to right now the pandemic, right? So he's 50 years old, I believe, this year. 50 years old. So. I run literally from age nine to the age of 50. I go through 41 years pretty quickly. I break it down and I use quotes from 2017, April 2019, and April 2020. I hope you can enjoy it. It sort of will explain who I am dealing with, who you are dealing with, right? So let me 
go back to this, a Twitter chat is an organized conversation about a given topic. This option enables businesses to connect with their audience and key industry influencers to discuss a specific issue and both share their expertise. There is a strange, there's a range, not a strange, there's a range of established Twitter chats, it's been a long day, which occur weekly, such as small biz chat, hashtag small biz chat, where people come together to discuss the challenges or opportunities unique to this group. Chats are generally hosted by a brand moderator who will pose questions that people then answer to discuss. Um, Abstract Echo says, in other words, you didn't buy our smoke and mirrors, so we're going to keep our word. Mark Routon, I haven't heard much about the Lyft app being turned off this week. Yeah, but I think, honestly, uh, Mark, to me, it looks like that both the Uber and the Lyft rider app are off. They should be, right? Uh, remember, this challenge was made uh, before things getting really, really crazy with the pandemic. So I believe smart Uber and Lyft drivers have both apps switched off. You can use Twitter chats to help build your brand. To do this, find established chats where your target or niche audience audiences are active and participate in the conversation. The key is to provide value rather than a sales pitch to capture their attention. The better the value, the more likely participants are to follow you, learn about your business, and subsequently recommend you to others. Now, that's a very positive spin from a business point of view. Sadly, in this case, he had to use this medium to pound them and get paid. Number two, recorded and live videos, right? Show, don't tell is a common mantra of fiction writers and can also be put to good effect on Twitter. You can include up to two minutes and 20 seconds of a recorded video in your tweets and, and set them to automatically play when someone scrolls through their feed. The allowed length for the videos used to be 30 seconds and it was often used as a teaser to get the audience to visit the company website to view the entire recording. I haven't created any of those. I've seen them. And given the average viewer's attention span, some businesses believe that shorter videos are still the best strategy. Twitter also has a feature for recording live videos within the Twitter app, which is an excellent way to share exciting news, show a new product or design feature, or give a tour of your store or office. Live videos are growing in popularity because they help viewers make a personal connection with your business. As such, it's worth using this capacity to your advantage, right? And again, you can watch videos on YouTube about this. You know, they really show you interactive um, how this takes place. Number three, Twitter polls. People love taking quizzes about everything from which Disney villain are they most likely to, if they were uh, one, would they be white, red, or Zinn Vandal? On Twitter, business can use polls to get feedback on their products or services, learn the best way to connect with their audience, or identify which topics they want to discuss in a Twitter chat, and he gives you examples there. Twitter polls are easy to create, and if they're pinned to the top of your feed, they also easily found and used. When your polls are retweeted, all responses from the retweets are added to your totals, potentially giving you access to much broader data sample. To maximize um, the impact of your Twitter polls, ensure you have a goal for each one and don't run more than one per month. Um, use all 280 characters. That literally has doubled, right? Um, they are, there was a lot of controversy around Twitter's move to double the tweet length from 140 to 280 characters last September, but research has since found that extended tweets generate more engagement. The 140 character limit is a difficult habit for many people to break, but for those who do, they found that it improves both creativity and grammar, making your tweets more professional. Many businesses are now using 
the longer format as mini blogs or um, lead ins to more extensive content on their website. In addition, with so many people choosing to stay within the shorter limit, longer tweets often stand out from the crowd. Given these findings, it's worth using every one of your allotted characters to help boost awareness and build your brand. I tell you, when I go after people like Dara, Tony, um, Andrew McDonald, Pierre Dimitri, all of those individuals, John Zimmer, Logan Green, I use every single letter right up to the very last one when I have zero left. I fill it out so I get a nice big ad, a nice big statement. Follow the right people. So, for example, this specific um, channel that I built out, right, Chair Professor, and I don't regard myself as the master tweeter. I'm getting better and better. I'm a YouTuber, but I'm definitely getting better at Twitter, right? So I, I go after, it says, follow the right people. I look for people in the rideshare industry, Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, uh, rideshare bloggers, news outlets, limousine services, taxi services, everything that fits into my environment, right? Um, in my new channel, which is going to be branded spot above, um, I will be reaching out to far more different people, but including all my brothers and sisters from the Rideshare Professor channel, the people that I've created relationships with. I want to learn and grow with the Mark Routens, with the Jimmy Abstract Echoes, with the Dennis Shaws, with the Nathaniel Davies. Um, he says I love the gig channel. You're cool. Thank you, Nathaniel. You're awesome, my friend. I really appreciate you. I do. It's in times like this, you know, you get very tired. It's it's a long, long day from morning to night, and then you get like these, these words of encouragement. This is what keeps you going. This is what keeps you alive, my friend. You know, um, broke my heart, you know, in a live feed, what was it, yesterday, to find out about Tina. Just broke my heart to, to – she's stranded there in her room going through all the COVID motions – no one's helping her out. The company's not helping her out. And, you know, it just motivates us to do more. Guys like Brian, who, who presented these articles to me and who showed me the screenshot on how he got paid, right, showed me the proof. Okay, three days ago, one week ago, look, Torsten, look what changed. And here we are. I'm, I'm on the phone with my buddy in Texas, Brian walks and look, I sent you the screenshots. This is exactly what happened. This is what went down. I did this and this and this. I followed a lot of your suggestions. I did use all my know-how. So we work together. We encourage each other, right? And, you know, um, these are the text messages from him. That slide there, this very one over here, of course, I used in the in the feed. So I can use that in the YouTube and uh, channel and amplify it even more bring attention to his blogs, hopefully get him a couple of followers. And what we do, what do we do? Myself, Rideshare Professor, with a social media blogger, Brian, we create a win-win situation. We grow together, we fight together, we represent together, and we get to share together with our brothers and sisters in the live feed. Cool. I like that. Now, follow the right people. Well, I am following everyone, every ex executive that can, I can get my hands on in Uber, in Lyft, in DoorDash. I follow them all, right? Why? Because when I do come out with explosive statements, with catchy statements, when I do want to get under their skin, when I do want to show the world how incapable, how incompetent they are, I got to put their names in the mix, right? I got to follow the right people. Sadly, you know, I would say follow the right wrong people. Follow the right wrong people. Uh, most businesses focus on attracting followers, but savvy ones understand the value of following industry leaders and influencers, right? And that's one thing I have done. You know, my, my LinkedIn portfolio, I kid you not, has about 20,000 business relationships. Before I even started building out YouTube, I was all about LinkedIn. 
I had 20,000 followers on LinkedIn that had relationships with me. We're sharing, talking, you know, that's more in the business world. But that was way before I even transitioned to YouTube. And now I'm trying to learn like a little kid, super hungry for the, uh, for, for the info. I'm trying to learn everything about Twitter. I, I was always anti-Twitter for some reason, right? But now I see the power. Following the right people can help you keep up to date on trends, conversations, and audience interests. You can also learn from the actual Twitter feeds and see what works via tweet and what falls flat. Curate their tweets by retweeting them with them with your own commentary added, recognizing their expertise while adding um, your own to the mix. These people are more likely to follow you in return and help you generate quality followers by association. Um, number five, integrate Twitter into your social media plan. Um, Senebobo, holy water. How are you, buddy? Nathaniel Davies says, just announced in Little Rock, Arkansas, that Amazon is coming to town. I just bought 80, 80 acres of land. 80 acres of land. Not good. That's good. That's a good move. That's a great move. That's a great real estate move. Seno Bobo, Alpha Dog. Yeah, we got to send the Alpha Dogs out there after Uber. Exactly. So good move, Nathaniel. Proud of you. Integrate Twitter into your social media plan. Nearly every business uses multiple social media platforms for marketing activities. Let me just repeat that. Every, nearly every business uses multiple social media platforms for marketing activity. So we could use a gentleman in the room as an example, Abstract Echo or Uberman, or whatever brand you are putting out there whether you've created your logo, you got to go across the board and set up those different social media platforms. Same name, same logo, same branding, and very often the same message throughout multiple platforms, right? You have one story, boom, you push it out there. You Facebook it, you tweet it, you YouTube it, you Instagram it, you TikTok it. And by the way, like great TikTokers, hey, Danny, are you asleep? Yeah, she's out. Um, Dan is out cold on the couch, my fiance's kid, but she is going to do a video with me because she's becoming a little TikTok. It's more for the kids, but she's all excited. She said, hey, can I do that video with you? Can I show people how to TikTok? I said, absolutely. We'll do it together on this platform. Um, not really the right fit for the ride share professor channel, but for this new channel, I'm opening it up in all directions, my friends. TikTok it, says Sene Bobo. Um, so integrate Twitter into your social media plan. As we said, nearly every business uses multiple social media platforms for marketing activities, but integration is the key to maximizing impact. Understand which platforms are preferred by your various niche audiences, then tailor your content accordingly. Assure that your message is consistent across all your channels to, conf to avoid confusion of your brand, says Dima Midon, founder of Traffic Box. And don't make the mistake of using Twitter solely to promote the content on other platforms, but recognize it as a significant component of your broader online marketing plan, he adds. Bottom line, by Brian Hughes, my buddy, Houston, Texas, he says, Twitter offers a range of opportunities to engage your target audience in what in, in, in ways that are still largely unique. Appreciate the platform, platform's differences and use these proven techniques to elevate your efforts. Beautiful. Now, the third and final article, that, that one was six ways to boost your brand presence. Um, this particular one we've already covered was four reasons brands and businesses need Twitter. Now the final one, how to optimize your social media posting frequency. Hey, uh, Danu, Danu, are you awake? Danu! No, she's got the thing. She's got her headphones on, blaring loud. So um, how to optimize your social media posting frequency 
with social media consumption habits changing as our relationships with different platforms continue to evolve, what worked last year might not work today. Um, did you hear me? Did you fall asleep there? No. Okay, so doing a feed here, right, about Actually. social media. We're talking about yes. Twitter. We're talking about everything. And then you expressed, what are you really good at? Um, dancing, and I do it on TikTok. You do it on TikTok. So you have, like, your own little TikTok channel. Yes. And you create, you bust your moves. You do the music and all of that. And you, like, I've seen you. You get, like, mega creative, right? Thank you. You're good. Yes. Even my son, he's 16. He's like, wow, she really, really knows her stuff, right? Um, so are you open to do a sort of a TikTok live feed for the audience sometimes next week? Yes, that sounds really fun. So like what are like some of the topics that we need to cover? Obviously how to create the what? The TikTok account? Well, yes, how to t uh, create the TikTok account, how to make videos. How to make the videos. And how long are these videos generally? Either uh, the longest you can do is a minute. Oh, so they don't allow you to go over a minute? Well, unless you hack. <laughs> Which, <laughs> you hack. No, no, no. We don't want to teach these people hacking. You see, she's already talking about hacking. So mm -hmm. so you try to keep them short and sweet 60 seconds. Yes. Do you find like that 30 seconds are better than 60 seconds? Well, I'm, uh, I personally don't stay tuned in for the whole minute because I get bored unless okay. you make it interesting for the whole minute. Okay, so... Probably better like to have like 30 to 40 good seconds. Yes. Will you tell the people how old you are? I am 11. 11 years old, right? And she's building a big audience on TikTok. My um, son, Ryan, you know him. He has a big following on YouTube and Fortnite and all of those things. Um, so we all have our likes, right? Yes. Um, your sister, apparently, Gwyneth. Yes. She also TikToks. Yes, but her account what, is private. Her account is private. Okay, we're not even going to reveal that account <laughs> to the world, right? But what does she like to do? Just like blah, blah, blah? Uh, or does she do dances or what does well, she do? She loves comedy, like funny jokes and stuff. Okay, so she, she's more like a prankster, jokester type of character. Yes. Okay, and you focus your channel on dance yes. and, and crazy moves, crazy movements that you make. Yes. Cool. Well, I'm excited to bring her onto the show next time, which is only going to be about TikTok, right? Okay. Only about TikTok. We're now talking about Twitter, social media, but we are going to dedicate a whole video together. You and I are going to sit down here, right? You're going to have your own chair, right? You're going to be like, I'm going to shift over here so you can come in there. Look, come mm -hmm. in. Like, so you're going to be like super close. Like you get your half, I get my half, and then we are going to do like a full on TikTok session. That sounds really fun. Awesome. Shake okay. on it. Okay, bro, bro, uh, bro, nag there. Okay, cool, awesome. I'm excited about that. So, with social media consumption habits changing as our relationship with different platforms continues to evolve, what worked li last year might not work today, right? Um, how often is too often to share with your audience? Mastering posting frequency and walking that fine line between being, being informative and becoming an annoyance is as much a science as it is an art. We want to connect with our social media followers without driving them away, right? And I have seen that. Oh, look who we have in the room here. Forrest MBSC Gaming Noob. Hello, all. Professor, they shut South Carolina down. Are you leaving this video up so I can watch later? I need to see how to get paid. 100%, my friend. Absolutely. The video is going to be up. Um, Abstract Echo says, hello, Danu. It's going to be fun. He says it's going to be done, but I think he means it's going to be fun. Cool. So we want to stay top of mind without driving them insane. And we want to find the perfect three-way balance between sharing original content, curating interesting pieces, and utilizing user-generated content. Um, a Sisyphean task, not necessarily, as long as you keep these best practices in mind. Right? 
Number one here, how to optimize social media posting frequency. The quest for the best posting time can drive even the most rational and experienced social media manager a bit crazy. I've combed through the available posting research to pull together a sample schedule for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. So Brian is giving us a great understanding of when to post on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and Pinterest. I move on those two first platforms, so I would be interested in listening what they have to say on that side. I'm not an Instagrammer, and I don't rock and roll on Pinterest, so it doesn't really interest me. Should I be on there? Absolutely, I should be on there. Facebook, when to post? Thursdays and Fridays get the best postment engagement. However, you should aim to post at least daily. For daily posters, mid-afternoon times, 1 to p, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. are best for optimal engagement, says Matt Banner with an on-blast blog. Facebook post engagement is steady for the first 90 minutes, so start with a mid-afternoon schedule and tweak it from there. Interesting. How frequently to post? Aim to post five to 10 times per week on Facebook. Highest activity levels. Posts at 1 p.m., get the most shares. Posts at 3 p.m., get the most likes. Activity levels are pretty steady throughout the workday and evening commute 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. I had no idea. Bonus engagement tip. Let's be honest. Most of us scroll through our Facebook feed. Yes, we do. Um, when we wake up each morning, right? Um, if you're struggling to find a sweet spot for likes and feel like your brand is getting drowned out in the evenings, try experimenting with early morning posts. Interesting. Now, Twitter. I'm listening. When to post. If you can swing it, follow a daily schedule. If you're not following a daily posting schedule, then Wednesday Saturday and Sunday are the best days for posting. Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. So Saturday and Sunday, those are weekends. Uh, tweets have an incredibly short life cycle, around 18 minutes. So timing and frequency is everything. Had no idea that it only had a life cycle of about 18 minutes. How frequently to post? Three to five tweets per day. Um, are the magic number for optimal posting reports. Track social response per tweet peaks at five and then drops off. Note this number doesn't include response tweaks to fan engagement. If a fan tweets at your brand, don't leave them hanging just because you've, um, you have it, your predetermined daily tweet number. Highest activity levels, highest level of B2B Activity is during the weekdays. Highest B2C is on weekends and Wednesdays. Expect the most retweets at 1 p.m. and the highest CTR at 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. Bonus engagement tip. At mention influences, individuals or companies that you reference in your content for more retweets. Instagram, when to post. Peak Instagram posting time coincides with the end of the workday and start of rush hour traffic. Matt Banner with On Blast blog recommends 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., although 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. also see a spike in engagement. Um, another surprising peak engagement time, 2 a.m., is popular. Highest activity levels. Every day is good as a good day with Instagram. Activity levels vary very little based on the day of the week. How frequently to post? Aim to post one per day every day. Don't spam your followers more with more than two daily posts. Bonus engagement tip, tag industry influencers in relevant posts and resist the temptation to buy followers. More followers but low post engagement versus likes is a red flag that you've purchased a fake list of bots 
which hurts you, which hurts your credibility with real followers. Pinterest, when to post. Blows my mind that you can actually purchase fake lists. Had no idea. Pinterest, when to post. In general, the best day to post is Saturday. During the work week, optimal posting time is 8 p.m. to 11 p.m., with activity peaking around 9 p.m. Since most users log on inconsistently varying, your timing will help expose your pins to the widest user segments. How frequently to post? At a minimum, aim for five pins per day. If you have more content, post up to 30 times per day. No matter how many pins you're posting, spread them out over the course of the afternoon and evening. Never schedule a pin dump all at once. Highest activity levels, peak engagement times can vary by industry. The peak time for fashion and retail is Friday at 3 p.m., reports Matt Banner with On Blast blog. Foods and crafts are most popular on Sundays. Foods and crafts are most popular on Sundays. Listen up, Abstract Echo. And fitness pins perform best on Mondays, reports Buffer Experiment to find when your pins perform the best. Bonus engagement tip. Pins are highly searchable. Make your uh, make yours easy to find. While the majority of clicks, 70% happens within the first day, the remaining clicks can occur through 30 days or beyond. With the right search terms, your pins will have a very long shelf life. Next steps for optimizing social media posts. These guidelines are intended as a useful jumping off point for experimenting with your own posting schedule. Mark Routon, don't forget to hit the like button. That helps me a lot. Thank you so, so much. Um, for best results, they should be used in conjunction with social media management software so you can monitor analytics and tweak to adjust your audience's evolving preferences. I'm a big fan of Hootsuite, Sprout Social, and Buffer for managing posts and tracking feedback. If you're relatively new to the world of social media brand management, consider bringing in the experts to help get things set up and running smoothly. Even big companies like eBay, Microsoft, and Expedia turn to outside experts for digital marketing support. If you're curious, those companies have all used web moves, internet strategists. There's no shame in getting help. In fact, reaching out to the experts may be one of the smartest marketing moves you could make. The bottom line, with social media consumption habits changing as our relationship with different platforms uh, continues to evolve. What worked last year might not work today. Case in point, Periscope and Snapchat are two of today's hottest platforms, not necessarily, and they weren't on most brands' radar this time a year ago. Again, sign up for the blog. I'll leave the links uh, that Brian Hughes put out there. These three articles, we'll cover them today. Uh, back to his success story. Um, it was um, a week ago where Uber declined him, saying he doesn't qualify for the 14 days financial assistance. He then turned to Twitter, and three days ago, he got $2,550.80, which I call a huge success with relentless social media engagement and postings, just like I'm doing right now really calling out Tony West, really calling out Dara Kay, really calling out all the Uber executives because of their sad, sad support in these difficult times. My friends, I appreciate you all. Uh, it was a 50-minute um, live feed. I will quickly make a short uh, video on my ride share professor where I will link to this video to get more exposure. Remember, I'm trying to rack up 4,000 hours. You guys have been amazing. You've helped me um, get a lot of minutes and a lot of hours on this feed tonight that contribute towards the 4,000. It is because of you that I get to the 4,000 hour mark. And for that, I'm extremely grateful. I wish you all a good night and I will see you back here tomorrow on the live feeds. Good night, everyone. God bless. Stay safe. Remember, if you go out there, always wear your masks, right? 
always wear a pair of glasses or goggles, whatever you can. Um, if you do have these, great. Put them on. Uh, wash your hands multiple times per day. Use your disinfectant spray um, with everything you come in contact with. God bless you, my friends. Thank you.